On June 18, 2023, the Titan submersible imploded in the North Atlantic Ocean. If I'm telling the perfect spot, it imploded 1,600 feet away from the wreckage of the RMS Titanic. Which is, the Titanic is present, like, the Titanic's wreck is present, like, uh, 400 miles away from the coast of Newfoundland in Canada. It, it did implode quite strongly. And even U United States and even Mexico took place in the investigation of what happened there. This was made from Ocean Gates. So this was the second company which sends humans down into the oceanic crust. Let's check when was the Titan launched. The Titan was launched on 8 a.m. by the Polar Prince, which is actually an icebreaker. It was completely set for the journey. Okay, on June 18th, 2023, a submersible named Titan got missing in the North Atlantic Ocean. It had two. It had two successful journeys. So, on 1912, you all know what happened to the infamous ship named Titanic. So, you know its wreckage is underwater. So, there, the pressure is so high. So, only something called a submersible can go under. Okay. Anyway, so Indian Navy has a submarine, and why couldn't it take people down into the Titanic's wreck? Simple, because it is too, it has so much pressure, the water is so much pressurized onto it. So it just crushes the submarine, and that's what we call it a crush that. So the difference between these two guys, um, submersible and the submarine, what is the difference between them? A submersible can go very deep, one. A submersible couldn't go on itself. Like, a submarine could be dropped into the water by a roller, you know, most ship launchers, they will use rollers, which it just rolls down and gets into the sea, which makes a giant wave. Just like that, that's how a submersible, I mean, a submarine is released. But it's a different story for a submersible. So the submersible should have some support. So it should have a mothership, just like the Polar Prince, which was used during the launch of the Titan. So a submarine is very long. This is so round. Why? Because in the Roman Empire, they found out that if something was wrong, long, it won't take that much pressure. It will just be crushed. But if something is round, then it's good to go in a depth. So submarine, submarines normally have a crush depth, which is up to 3,000. And for the Virgin class, or the limits, I mean, uh, what do you call that? That's a very wrong word. Anyway, so for the Virgin class, it was like uh, 4,000 and all. Uh, the maximum was 10,000 feet achieved by the Soviet submarines, the X class and all. So anyway, this submersible is allowed to go up to 30,000 feet. So that's where, the, I mean, on 4,500 feet, that's where the Titanic's wreck is in the seafloor. So even like, it, was in, it wasn't the only the first uh, trip taking down to the Titanic. Lots of people went down there. Like James Cameron, the director of the famous oscar winning movie Titanic, he went all the way into the Challenger Deep. This is not only the first one, a lot of people, some people went down in there, in the darkness. So another thing I should say is, like, we explored a lot more in space than in under Earth or in the seas. Like, there are lots to investigate or explore in the seas than in the space, because we ex explored a lot of these. So what really happened to the Titan submersible? There were five crew. So uh, there were Pakistan's uh, billionaires and his son. And like, the Ocean Gates CEO, Rush, his name is Rush, an explorer and another man who was in the Titan summary. Totally, there were five peoples. What was the use of going down in a risky scenario? It's just going down 12,500 feet. Why? It's not just for sea exploration. It's to visit the Titanic, which was in the seabed for over 100 years. So normally... Almost only a few people had a chance to visit the Titanic. So it cost a lot. In the U.S., on older days, ocean gates were a little cheaper. It was like one thousand. Uh, I mean, uh, one twenty-five thousand, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. But now it's increased to two hundred something thousand dollars. So it's pretty expensive. And if you want to take a trip, it's gonna be so hard to find that much. Let's check the working of the Titan. The Titan was controlled by a joystick. So the joystick was controlled by the CEO of Ocean Gates, a game controller. The game controller is quite popular. It's used to control robots from rescuing people to military uses to fly one of the largest drones in the world, the helicopter. 
And anyway, there's a blind helicopter. There's a helicopter in the U.S. military which is controlled by um, game controller. If you're a fan of games, you must check out this game controller. This is actually very fun, but it was quite a very bad tragedy. What really happened? Or well, anyway, so how does it work? It had four propellers. So four of them were the same propellers, and uh, two of them facing opposite of the ocean gates, uh, Titan. And two of them facing downwards. So the, the the two of them which were facing downwards for was for elevation and descent, ascend and descend. And the other were for steering and going forward and back. Titan's hull is made out of five inches of carbon fiber, allowing it to withstand high pressures at the wreck of the Titanic. It was propelled by four electric thrusters, two horizontal and two vertical, allowing it to travel at speeds up to three knots. Pilot steers using a modified with video game controller. It's very hard to control the video game controller. So, so weights allow for the Titan to sink 2.4 miles below the sea level and can be offloaded so that it returns to the surface. Actually, the toilet is separated from the rest of the crew by a thin curtain. At the front of the submersible, with uh, it, and it provides a spectacular view through the 21 inch above the viewport is the HD camera. The titanium cap is bolted onto the hull before the expedition, sealing the passengers inside until they return to the surface. And there were different safety features in the Titan. So the Titan, the, the most uh, popular one is when someone, let's say the pilot got injured and uh, he, he was unconscious. So what would happen is when it stays too much time underwater, it would just race to the surface by its own. It was more like an artificial intelligence, but it's not. Anyway. And it works with batteries, one of the same batteries you found you find in electric cars. And it has a 96-hour um, oxygen supply, that's three days. And also, it has a carbon dioxide to oxygen um, pump, like it, it fills it, the, it sucks in carbon dioxide and leaves out oxygen, which is a really good technology once you talk about submersible staying under there for eight hours. If you're comparing that two hours downward and two hours upward, you think it's four hours. But there are lots of other things you want to see in the ocean. So it's totally taking eight hours for the ascent. And sometimes it, it needs, for, for emergency, it needs to go down, come up, down, and come up because they want to waste a little fuel to make it a little lighter. So it was quite a nice structure and it was made from carbon fiber and uh, titanium. So normally, before, they used only carbon fiber, which could only go 3,000 feet below. But this time, that was Cyclops 1, one of the Ocean Gate's first um, descents, so the second one. So after that came the Titan, which had two successful journeys down into the Titanic, and one which got horribly wrong. So the six steps of launching this Titan. So the first step, the, uh, the, uh, the Polar Prince was its mothership. So it goes, comes over. Let's say this is the wreck of the Titanic and this is the Polar Prince. The Polar Prince comes and stops at the nearby the Titanic's wreck. Then they drop, they, then they deploy the, the Titan on a raft. So it is dropped by a raft, the raft goes a little under, then it goes out at three knots. Then after it's deployed and it's good to go, the raft re-rises into the ship back to it. People pull it down or if it's uh, rope is cut, they use tugboats to go into it, to make it go into the boat, and continue their journey to the Titanic. That's what it did, but it, this time it went tragically wrong. What happened to the Titan submersible? It's getting serious now. It's not clear what happened, and the most popular theory is it imploded, the opposite of explosion. If you are, if you hear of the Hiroshima blast, you can hear the word explosion, which means it detonated outwards. But this is a whole new chapter. It imploded, which means all the outside pressure crushed it, and then only it exploded. So where does all that pressure come in? The first one is the weight of water on top, and the second which pushes downwards is buoyancy. If something, if normally things float, like a simple dropper just floats on the water. So if you want something to sink, it should be heavier than the water. Let's say uh, you, drop, you drop something into the well, into a fully filled well, very deep. The water is heavy, so it pushes the thing downwards. And also, due to buoyancy, the water below wants to push the thing upward which causes a very equal force. And the five scenarios, what would have happened to Titan? So the first one is it got tangled in a debris, like debris of the Titanic. The Titanic's wreck is hidden in a ton of things full of debris because you know the Titanic split into two when it was sinking. So that this sharp edge would have caused the Titan to be tangled on it and it's not getting out. It's a, another thing is that like the same thing, the Titan must have gone in 
into the Titanic and got stuck because he couldn't go out or whatever, whatever you call that. That's another, that's another chapter. So the second thing that must have happened is a power shortage. Like, when it was diving, in, when it was inside the Titan, I mean, when the Titan was inside the Titanic, showing the grand staircase and all, its power must have been shut down, shut out. So what happens is just lays down. Even if it was outside, it would be having the chance to resurface and rescue the teams because it's more of like impossible to open the hatch underwater because it has so much pressure onto the hatch. So that's the second thing. The third thing that must have happened is got tangled on a ghost net. So ghost net, tons of nets are there in the ocean floor left by fishing boats. So if it got caught on that, so there was a similar case during in the so one of the Soviet submersibles, which got caught in the ghost net, and another drone was able to let it free, which made it to surface. So another thing which must have happened is quite weird compared to this. What if there was only one portal glass, and that was only capable of going 1,300 feet? What if that thing shattered? So if that shattered, all the water would get in, which crushes the people. So compared to lack of oxygen, pressure kills faster than the lack of oxygen. Like, it takes seven minutes for someone to completely die in lack of oxygen. But it takes only milliseconds for someone to die, which is more like 400 atmospheres. So this is one atmosphere. Even you can feel hard to walk in this atmosphere. Another thing is that our brain takes 100 milliseconds to feel pain. Like, when you're when you're pricking someone or when you're pinching someone, it takes 100 milliseconds. Like, when, when you're pinching, it takes 100 milliseconds to move your hand because... The brain needs to process it's like more like a computer. The input is the nerve giving the message, then the brain processes and gives the output as retrieve the hand. That whole, th whole thing takes 100 milliseconds. If you're an old person, it would take 500 milliseconds. But this implosion only took one millisecond. That's so weird, since even, even the most wealthiest man wouldn't even know the pain of the thing. They would be immediately crushed. They don't have time to process all the data, and the brain wants to know what's happening out there. So that's the cause, that's the main cause of the sinking. So if I'm showing an example what must have happened, this is the example. So imagine like this was the Titan going underwater, this holy bunker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow into it and make it a vacuum inside it. What happens is when I blow and make it into a vacuum, there's no air inside it to push it up to become that thing. All the uh, pressure outside just crushes it like this. So let's check what that happened. That got completely crushed. Okay, another thing I could show you, like just press this. This whole look. See, it got crushed because there's no air in there, and constant air pressure is constantly the outside air pressure is constantly pushing on it, which makes it be crushed. Once I release it, air gets into it, which makes it back to its shape like this. So that was, that's what really happened to the implosion. It would have imploded and was um, accepted by the Canadian Coast Guard. There was a part of the submersible which was tend to dissolve in water. So that was completely a mystery. They don't know if it was right or someone is saying because they hate Ocean Gates. So Ocean Gates founder and CEO, Rush. So uh, he died from the this Titan tragedy. So it lost because almost billions of dollars because it, it costs a lot to construct this thing. Uh, another thing you, that boggles your mind would be he said he remains on board the Titan. When the Coast Guard announced it was missing, everybody looked and one of Boeing's aircraft, rescue aircraft, heard a banging noise from the ocean. The aircraft well, was quite um, confirmed that uh, it was the crew on board the Titan banging on its hull for rescue. So then when they found it 1,600 uh, feet away from the Titanic in five pieces, they knew that no one was alive. Just like the Titanic, the Titan was also unable to complete its journey. Bye.